everyone, these are notes 3.10, which are on finding equations without being given rates of change or initial values. So um, all the things that we've looked at, we've been given these rates of change and these initial values, and we can use them to find our equations. Now we have to figure out our equations without these um, pieces of information given to us. So if you take a look at question number one, it says find an equation to relate the cost to rent a bus C to the distance traveled, which is D. So the first thing I need to do is find my rate of change. So to find my rate of change, I need to do the rise over the run. And I can choose any two points to do this. So I'm just going to choose the first two that I see here. So to find the rise, I would just do 270 minus 225. So here, when I do that subtraction, I would end up getting 45. So this is $45. And I know it's dollars because it's listed here as dollars. And then over here, for my run, it went from 150 to 300, so I would subtract those two numbers and I would get 150 kilometers. So I know my run is 150 kilometers. Let's go ahead and divide these two values and see what we get for our rate of change. And I get 0 0.3, so that means that it's 30 cents per kilometer. So now I know my rate of change. Now, the next thing I need to do is find my initial value. Now, to find the initial value, it's a little bit trickier. So I'm going to figure out, th first thing I'm going to figure out is what the cost of 150 kilometers is without the initial fee. Well, we know that it costs 30 cents per kilometer, and we're going for 150 kilometers. So I'm going to multiply 30 cents by 150, and I end up getting $45. But we know that our cost with the initial fee is $225. It's not really this $45 here. So we have to figure out what the initial fee is. Well, if the cost with the initial fee is $225 and it costs $45 for those 150 kilometers without the initial fee, we subtract those two values and we end up getting $180. So our initial fee is $180. So now we have our two pieces of information that we need. We know our rate of change is 30 cents per kilometer and our initial value is $180. So we can go ahead and write our equation now. And our equation will say that the cost to rent a bus will be 30 cents per kilometer. And it, say, it says to use D for distance traveled plus an additional $180. So this right here is our equation. Now quick note, I could have also just worked backwards to figure this out. So this one is nice because it's going up by 150 each time right here. So I can work backwards and subtract the 150 and I can see that this is zero. And I can see here that this is going up by 45 every time. So I can work backwards, subtract the 45, which we pretty much did right here. And we can say that we can see that the initial cost would be $180. All right, in this next example, we're told that Zara and Raj both join the Video Game of the Month Club. There's a joining fee plus an additional fee every time they play a new game. So this past year, we're told that Zara rented seven games and paid $55, and that Raj rented 17 games and paid $105. And we want to write an equation for the cost of being a member of the club using G to represent the number of games and C to represent the cost. So. What I would do here is I would actually create my table of values. So um, first thing I want to do is make a table. And we've got the number of games versus the cost, which is measured in dollars. And here we're told that Zara rented seven games and paid $55. And that Raj rented 17 games and paid $105. Now I'm going to use the chart to find my rate of change. And to find the rate of change, you always do rise over run. And here we know that our rise, it went up by $50. And we figure that out by doing 105 minus 55. So this is $50. And we know that our run is 10 games because 17 minus 7 is equal to 10. So this is 10 games. And then we just divide these two values and we get $5 per game. 
So this right here is our rate of change. Now we need to find our initial value. And to find our initial value, we need to choose one of our sets of points, either, either the 755 or the 17105. I'm just gonna use the 755. And the first thing I wanna do is find the cost of seven games without the initial fee. Well, if it's $5 per game and we're going to rent seven games, then I would just multiply seven by five, which is $35, okay? Now I need to use the actual cost to find the initial value, and the actual cost is $55. So it's $55 with the initial value, but it's $35 without it. So we would have to subtract these two values, and we would, be, we would find out that it's $20 um, as our initial value. So now we have our rate of change. And we also have our initial value, so we can go ahead and write our equation. And so we can say the cost to be a member is $5 per game plus an, uh, an initial $20 fee. Really quick note, I could have also used um, this 17105 and I would have gotten the same answer. So instead of multiplying 7 by 5, I would multiply 17 by 5. And when I do that, I would get 85. And then I would take this 105 right here, subtract 85, and I would still get 20. So it doesn't matter which one of these points you use as long as you're consistent. So if you're going to use 7, use 55. If you're going to use 17, use 105. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in class. Bye.